and tomorrow. For Dan Rather and all of us at CBS News all around the world, I'm Scott Pelley. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Brought to you in part by Walmart. Saving you and your family time and money with everyday low prices. This is CBS. Now on USA Tonight. Rat race. As quick as we can tell you about the rodent problems in this neighborhood, people race to their phones to tell us what was biting into their happiness. Swim science. The Olympic swimmers have dazzled us with their speed, but if this Maryland man has his way, someday they'll be even quicker. And incentive pay money prizes for kids who do well in school is this really the way to fix education from wusa 9 news this is usa tonight with Derek mcginty well good evening every so often we do a story that touches a nerve and ignites a flood of phone calls and yesterday's rat story was one of those apparently montgomery county is not the only place suffering from a summer of rats brought on by the cicada spring our own Stacy Cohan heard from one woman who told us, you think they have rats in Silver Spring? Come to our neighborhood. So she did. This part of Northeast is their turf now. And this isn't one or two running around. We have gangs of rats. Terrorizing all who live here. I got cats and the cats scared of them. In fact, when D.C. residents saw the rats we found in Montgomery County yesterday, they weren't impressed. They say the rat pack that runs this alley off 18th Street is bigger and meaner. We couldn't get any to show their furry faces during the day, but the evidence of their existence is obvious. It's so bad that the rats are eating through our new trash cans that the city has delivered us. When we walk out in our yard, there are rats there, feces everywhere, and the smell is terrible. And uh, some, uh, sometimes you walk out, one time, they, one did run over my foot. One morning, I get up in the morning, and I'm sitting there waiting on my car to warm up. Next thing I know, I seen you know, they're dancing up and out of the sewer holes. The Gale Street residents say they've called the D.C. Health Department and a few yards have been sprayed, but the rats remain. The city is supposed to have one rodent control officer per ward. No word yet on how often they come out and what they do to get rid of rats. Whatever it is, these folks say it certainly isn't enough. My fear is a disease. Uh, I mean, it's this terrible odors back there. The feces are all over every, every place. It's just, it's just nasty. So what would you like D.C. Health Department to do? Gas. <laughs> Gas them if they can. <laughs> Anything just to get rid of them. Well, Miss Scott, I just got off the phone with the D.C. Health Department. They told me they did see a spike in rat complaints this summer, very much like they've seen in Montgomery County. And they said the only way to get rid of an entire neighborhood problem is to get every resident to sign a petition, giving those rodent folks permission to hit every yard and every alleyway until there's nowhere for the rats to hide. Now, if you live in the city and you have a rat, rat problem, just log on to our website, WUSATV9.com, click on USA Tonight, and you can check in on my story, and it'll show you how to get some help. Okay, but the reality is, of course, where there are people, there are rats, so you're never going to get rid of all of them, but they could damp it down a bit, right? Yeah, most of the folks say, hey, one or two, fine, 15, 20, you know, that, that's a gang. That's right. a problem. And, and, you know, you think that you're safe putting it in those trash cans. You see those huge holes in these Those are some scary possible. holes. Metal trash cans, apparently. Uh, those are some tough rats. Indeed. Thanks a lot, Stacey. Appreciate it. Well, look, a string of four bank robberies all in one day. That's topping our look at other stories you need to know about for August 19th. Police in Maryland and Virginia are searching for some brazen bank robbers who apparently picked the same day to do their dirty work. In Virginia, a two-man team with guns held up two banks in Fairfax County. And over in Maryland, a man who only used a note to say he had a gun was able to pull off two robberies within 15 minutes in Prince George's County. Investigators believe there's no connection. Well, so much from that offer of peace from Muqtada al Sadr. Turns out his followers may be following through on their threats to attack Iraq's oil industry. They've broken into the headquarters of an oil company in Basra, setting the warehouses and offices on fire. And another group of Maryland National Guard members is headed for Iraq. 52 members of the 129th Signal Battalion said goodbye today in Towson. They'll be overseas for at least a year. If you've been watching America's Olympic swimmers, maybe you've said to yourself, man, they swim like fish. Well, 
what if they really could swim like fish? A local professor of fluid dynamics is working with USA Swimming to make it happen. Bruce Lashan with Swim Science. If I could be like a shark, I would go fast, but I can't. Like a lot of young swimmers, Rockville's Daniel Mengering has big dreams. The U.S. Open this year, and maybe someday the Olympics. A slight improvement in the dolphin kick he uses could make the difference between fame and obscurity. It could probably be like two, three tenths of a second off each wall, so that could be huge. And you can see that very, very nice posture going absolutely parallel to the bottom of the pool. At George Washington University, Professor Rajat Mittal has been studying the dolphin kicks used by Natalie Coughlin and Michael Phelps, kicks that have already helped propel them to Olympic gold. The oldest record in the books is obliterated. Mittal figures if he can create a computer model of the way Coughlin and Phelps swim, he can help other swimmers become even more successful. If we can understand what makes them better Kick, dolphin kickers that we can make half a body length eventually on the swimmers who are not able to do as well. Mattal's created a three-dimensional computer image of Conklin that shows not just how she pushes on the water but how the water pushes back, how it swirls and eddies creating both drag and propulsion. That's like a billion 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 or something. Absolutely, that we're talking about gazillions. But even at a hundred billion calculations a second, it takes a long time for an $800,000 supercomputer to model how water moves. That's as big as your refrigerator running for three to four months continuously in order to be able to give you one stroke. They have these little pectoral fins and they do a beautiful job of swimming fairly fast and maneuvering very well. Mattal developed the software by studying surf perch and bluegills for the Navy. The military wants to use it to design small robotic submarines. It was a natural jump to replace the fish in the models with humans. And in the long run, Mittal hopes to create a customized stroke for every human body type, from long and lanky Daniel Mengering to his smaller friends David Islin and Casey Germunder. Their coach sent three youngsters to the Olympic trials this year, and he says Mittal's program could make a big difference. The science of swimming keeps getting better and better, and that's how you see these world records break all the time. Mattal's now harnessing IBM's Blue Gene supercomputer, but it will still be months before he finishes his calculations. So it won't make a difference in Athens, but he says just wait four years for Beijing. All right, uh, computers are one thing, but I have actually tried to do that dolphin kick. It is so hard for us regular folk. Does he really think he can make a difference, make people swim like fish? Well, I, I don't think he's talking about regular folk like you and I, <laughs> but he's talking about people like those youngsters out at Montgomery Aquatic Center who get in the hour f uh, in the pool for five hours a day, mm. seven days a week. And if he can bring them up just a little bit, he can make all the difference. You know, he, he, fish, they've been learning how to swim for millions and millions.